Hello everybody, it's Lucy Wolf here, sleep consultant and author of The Baby Sleep Solution. I just wanted to talk to you today a little bit about using the dummy or the soother or the packy, the binky, whatever way you describe it. If you're watching this segment on my Instagram, make sure you look on the IGTV channel for the whole segment so that you get to hear everything I would like you to know. Um, so I guess with dummies, as I call them, I have a fairly balanced view, as with most things with your own, with your ch with your children, and I really do feel that it's an in-house and personal decision. The only thing with the dummy is then lots of parents report that they're doing a series of dummy runs. Their child needs replugging anywhere from between two or three times a night to forty times in the overnight period, and very often they feel that the dummy is the problem, and that they, if they didn't have a dummy, they would get a better sleep. And that's not always the case. First of all, I think it's important that once your feeding practice is established in those early few weeks that if you are inclined to use a dummy that you don't feel that you shouldn't and that you would just make an in-house decision I personally have used dummies with all of my four children and I'm a breastfeeding mom as well. Um, that said, I've tended to offload the dummy with, by about six months or so. But again, that was a personal decision on our part. So first of all, if you are a routine dummy user, regardless of your child's age, you may always need to do dummy replugs in the overnight period. So anywhere between two or three, which we sometimes consider to be normal, or um, or none, obviously, which would be wonderful. The more rested your child is, generally, the less dummy replugs you would need to do. And very often, the dummy replug that you're doing is actually just symptomatic of maybe the fact that your child is slightly overtired for whatever reason. That could be daytime sleep not being attempted when they are, or being attempted when they're already overtired. Maybe naps are short and varied in duration. Maybe the nap gap dynamic isn't being observed and possibly bedtime is too late. Of course, there also could be some dependency issues with drinks too close to sleep time, a level of parental input that is stopping your child's ability to cycle through the natural sleep phases. That said, to improve the dummy rep, uh, replugs, the dummy doesn't need to go, and that's the good news. It's just in. It's just a decision for you to make. So, if your child is between, let's say, six months and six and nine months, if you're any bit inclined to offload the dummy. Then have a conversation with your GP first to ensure that they feel it's the right thing to do. And then if you are making that change, then you would replace the dummy with this my stay and support approach. And again, lots of parents will be very determined to offload the dummy. But when they try to do it, it's more difficult than they would like it to be. And by that, I mean that their child is really upset. And again, if that is the case and you're making other changes like transitioning from rocking or feeding and trying to offload the dummy, then I will pick my battles and I would generally return the dummy and review it at a later stage. If your baby is beyond nine months of age, typically don't tend to offload it as part of changing what you do. I typically work on improving everything else and teaching your child to use the dummy for themselves. And again, if your baby is six months plus, although they won't have the skill set just yet, it emerges close to eight months of age, I try to encourage you to encourage them to use the dummy for themselves. Always put the dummy into their hand and guide their hand up to their mouth. And then over time, I might make their hand look around for it so that as they get older and as they get more able, that they can start to look around for the dummy and put it into their own mouth. I'm not a massive fan of putting a load of dummies into the cot, actually, until at least we feel like we've made progress with the dummy replugs. Because very often I find with older children, more than one dummy in the cot becomes a distraction. They want one in their mouth, they want one in their hand, they want one to run up and down the bars of the cot. So again, I tend to initially just use one dummy into the hand, guide the hand up to the mouth, over time make the hand look about for it, and work behind the scenes improving overtired levels and reducing parental input when necessary. And then I would always hope that we can scale that down to somewhere between none to two or three as time evolves. Um, 
if your child is slightly older again and they're inclined to throw the dummy out of the cot, I call this dummy retrieval. And again, I just get you as parents to maybe have um, a response plan so that I try not to give that activity airtime. So if that is happening to you, and it depends on where you're positioned, if you're still beside the cot or if you're leaving the room, generally just encourage you to have spares in your pocket. And then when your child chucks the dummy, I tend not to react tend to wait maybe three to five minutes and then I give you a new a, a new dummy so I don't give them the one that they've thrown and that way then we're not giving you know a whole search and rescue mission there's a little bit of entertainment value in in that for your child so though you'll never not give them back the dummy you just want to take the the entertainment value as I call it out of it so I hope that's helpful. You can read more about my thoughts on dummies and strategies to improve um, your overall sleep in my book, The Baby Sleep Solution. And also there's lots of content on my website, sleepmatters.ie. And um, I look forward to seeing you here again soon.